Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jesse Morrison, and I wanted to talk about a very common foot injury that at least 10% of the population is going to have, probably more that just don't comment about it, and that's called plantar fasciitis. So if you've ever had this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and if you haven't had it, hopefully you never get it because it's awful. I've had several patients that don't know each other describe it very similarly, so I'm assuming that's what it feels like. The most consistent one is feeling like walking on a bed of nails. Yeah, it's awful. The other description I've had is people feel like they tell me they're walking on glass. Now, where does this happen on the foot? Why does it happen? What other contributing parts of injuries in the lower extremity can be leading to this? What are the most common types of ways to treat it? And realistically, how do we treat it here at the Osteopathic Center? These are all the things I'm going to cover in the next 15, 20 minutes, however long it is. So this is very common in runners. It, it, I think it's the repetitive stress of the lower body constantly pounding, and this is where they end up feeling it. So. When people usually describe plantar fasciitis, it's in the middle of the bottom of the foot as it inserts into the heel. So if I flip this over, you can see this red right here. That's what they're pointing to. They're pointing to plantar fasciitis. Now, the plantar fascia is a thick ligament that connects the heel on the inside of the foot, not so much on the outside, to the toes. But I'd say 90 plus percent of people only complain about it at the heel. Usually, they do not comment on any issues in the front of the foot. And usually, the, the, the classic description is, when I get it out of bed in the morning, the first 10 or 15 steps are awful. They're so painful and uncomfortable. And then as I get going, it feels better. But when I sit down or when I don't do anything a long period of time during the day, I start to feel it again. This is the classic description of plantar fasciitis. So if you're wondering what it feels like, that's that's exactly what you describe. And the mechanism is essentially tightening of this or over tightening of this thick ligament and it gets very, very tight overnight because you're not moving presumably. And when you wake up in the morning, it starts to stretch and pull and it starts to create a lot of inflammation, almost like breaking ice up. And, and it just starts to break up and that's what you feel. And once everything's warmed up and, and the ice is broken or the, the ligament is stretched, then you get, then, then you go about your day and you don't have as much pain. But it can be very, very painful and very debilitating. You don't want to get out of bed because you know it's going to hurt when you start walking. So consistently we've seen this here and it doesn't seem to always start at the heel. That may where you feel it, but there's a chain reaction that often happens. So if it if you feel it at the heel, oftentimes the ligament, the tissue that comes from the calf and the calf starts in the back of the knee, comes out goes down the middle of the back of the leg, tapers to the Achilles tendon, which then comes down and inserts onto this heel. Then the same tissue comes across and turns into the plantar fascia. It's one continuous piece of tissue, different sections. The problem is usually there's a lot of tension at where the calf inserts into the back of the leg at the tendon level. It causes chronic pulling or stress on the Achilles, which can cause micro tearing of the Achilles. And then it causes chronic pulling of the plantar fascia. So you feel it likely down here, but don't really correlate it with any pain up here. But if you start digging in the calf, you're usually going to have pain. And then you realize, hmm, these may be connected and they are. So Oftentimes you have to fix both because if not, you're only fixing half the problem or it's just going to come back because you didn't fix everything that's correlated with this injury. 
plantar fasciitis comes in waves. Some people will have great couple months and then it flares up and they're miserable. Traditional medicine, traditional orthopedics approaches this a little bit different or a lot of it different than we do. When I saw this in my traditional orthopedic clinic before I came here, I would say, all right, we're either going to give you a medrol dose pack, steroids. We're going to put you in a boot, one of those big, crazy, look like ski boots, sometimes crutches or a little wheeled scooter, depending on, you know, how mobile you are and shut you down. Then you start working on physical therapy. You can start uh, dry needling. You can try dry needling. It's not super effective and very uncomfortable in, in this area. But oftentimes patients are wearing something called a Strasburg sock, which is an old school sock that basically you wear at night that has a connection that basically causes your toes to come up, causing the Achilles or the, the plantar fascia to be not relaxed, but tight. So when you take it off in the morning and start walking, your plantar fascia says, oh, I've been working all night. I'm not in pain. It doesn't work for everybody and you have to wear it. And a lot of people hate it because they don't like to wear it when they're sleeping. The reason why boots work is because you are not, Im you're, you're basically immobilizing everything. So you're not stressing any of this, but boots cause other issues. It's so heavy. You're going to cause hip issues, back issues. You can't really walk on it. You start hitting your other leg, or if you're sleeping uh, with it on, you're going to hit your partner's leg. It's awful. It is just not a good situation. Boots are very effective for fractures, but I don't really like them for a whole lot of other things. With that being said, there are other ways to address this. You can try shockwave therapy, which is very effective, not exactly comfortable, but very effective. But the thing that we've seen that helps the most is injections. Now you're probably saying I've had a steroid injection in there, or I've had steroid injections in my knee or my shoulder, wherever, and they do the job. Kind of. Here's the problem with steroid injections. They're not fixing anything. They are kicking a can down the road and worrying about it later. But what you're doing is while you're buying time, you're making the injury worse and you're damaging the tissue. Instead of healing the tissue with regenerative medicine, which is what we do here, you're actually damaging the tissue. You're making it worse and you're making it weaker. So if you inject steroids into the heel and then pretend like you've never had plantar fasciitis, there is a chance you will tear the plantar fascia. Think of a piece of paper and think of ripping it partially in half. The problem is the remaining part that's still attached is still pulling and still doing its job. But now it only has half a tendon to pull on. So it hurts even more. It's awful. The, the worst part from that would be a full tear of this, of this ligament off of the heel. At that point, you need surgery to reattach it. That's even worse. So you don't really want to baby it. You don't really want to put steroids in it and mask it because you might end up causing more damage. The same description applies to the Achilles tendon. Same exact description because you're weakening the tissue and then causing potential risk to full rupture, which then leads to surgery and a whole lot of other headaches. So don't do yourself a disservice for two months of relief or whatever it ends up being, if it does help. Actually improve the tissue. Create positive change, lay down new layers of tissue, strengthen the damaged tissue, help remove some of the scar tissue that has formed, and get rid of your pain. When you do that, you get back to normal life, get back to running, get back to whatever it is that you can't do because of your plantar fasciitis. This is debilitating, period. The more that you allow this to debilitate you, the more it affects your life. 
take back your life, take back your foot, your heel, and then you can move on and, and, and you can do everything you want to do. But you have to be aggressive with this. Most podiatrists and doctors choose a poor route to inject this. They think, oh, I'm going to go directly into the heel from a bottom, a direct approach. No. No. Stupid painful. There is no fat and a lot of nerves in this part of the foot. Bad combo. You do not want to directly inject this, even with numbing medicine. This is the most painful area in the body to inject. I literally inject every day. This is not the area that you want to inject, especially direct. So you take a different approach. Take a lateral approach or a medial approach. I prefer a medial approach if I can, but you can do lateral. I use ultrasound. I'm also trained in ultrasound. If you're not trained in ultrasound, then you're going to be doing it blindly. That's fine if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're not getting the exact source, you're not, you don't look at the plantar fascia and watch the medicine go into the plantar fascia tear or the tendinopathy, you're not going to get better. You're just wasting your time. This has to be done properly and you can't have the patient moving all around. You can't do it. You have to make sure that they are calm and that they are not moving. You can't do that with a direct approach. They're too uncomfortable. You numb up the area with a lateral or medial approach. You get, the, get this area nice and comfortable. When you, you push on their foot, makes it, can you feel this? Yeah, a little bit, but it doesn't hurt. Great. Now you're ready to actually inject then you can actually go in and put the product in there. Maybe you irritate the tissue a little bit with the needle head. They can't feel it. That's the good part. You don't do this without anesthesia. That's a no-no. And if your podiatrist or your doctor wants to do it without anesthesia, you leave. This, that's a no-no. Go to someone who knows what they're doing. Okay? Because you will never get another injection if, you, if they don't do it right the first time because you're going to be mentally scarred. This is a painful injection. Even with someone who knows what they're doing and do it the right way, it's a painful injection. But it's not miserable. And it doesn't have to be miserable. But it works. It works so well. I had one yesterday. It works really well. But you have to understand that the worse the injury, the more stronger the product you have to use. If it's a mild injury, you can use something called prolotherapy. A very mild stimulant. It's basically like a medical version of sugar water. It's dextrose. You put a little bit of lidocaine in it. It helps, but it's a little bit of help. It's not a big movement. If you want to step up to the next level, you're going to do PRP. Platelet-rich plasma where we take blood out, we spin it down, and then we numb up the area and inject it into there. That is uncomfortable. I'm telling you right now, PRP in this area is very, it's effective, but oh, it hurts. But you're going to make great productive change. So you, you got to bite the bullet and, and you know you're going to be miserable for a couple days to a week. But, and the other thing, I don't immobilize people after I do this. I do not want you putting yourself in a boot. No, 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 no. You get regular shoes. I don't, I don't want you immobilizing this. Immobilizing is going to lead to more issues. No. And I want you in physical therapy in three days. We're not babying this. It's time to get back to normal. Once you start getting this back to normal, you can go back to being normal. You're not in pain anymore. But we're not going to delay this and, and kick the can down the road for six months. You're not going to get anywhere. You just come back six months with a worse injury. And now I need more products to fix the same issue that you could have fixed six months earlier. Stop procrastinating and actually do what you want to do. This can be fixed. This can be significantly helped. You might not ever get it back like when you were 20, when it was perfect. That's, that might not be realistic, but that's fine. You just need the tissue to be healthier and you need it to calm down and you need it to be more stable and add more healthy tissue and get rid of the scar tissue. The, the larger the tear, the stronger the product. 
if I had a choice, I would use amniotic tissue allograft. A high level stem cell that's an anti-inflammatory that works beautifully. The problem is not everybody uses it. Not everybody knows what products are good and it's pricey in relative to some of the other stuff, but it works awesome. And someone who has it injected, who's had the other stuff will never have anything else ever again. It works amazing. But just know that you're gonna, you have to pay for the good stuff because, but it's worth it. There's a good chance you might not need another injection. If you do, do do therapy, I will promise you, you need another injection. Because if by the time you get to the doctor, it's already at least moderate. If, if it's the first time you've ever felt it, you probably have never got evaluated for it. So this is something that you want to address earlier. The earlier the injury, the milder the injury, the easier it is to fix. When these are moderate to severe, you have to throw the kitchen sink at it to make progress. Or you go to the OR and have surgery. And then that's a whole separate discussion. I hope this was helpful. I would love to hear your comments. And we will do another video soon. If you have any specific suggestions, please drop them in the comments below and we'll check them out. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.